Now, one thing that I noticed students very often uh, have difficulty in understanding, it's when it comes to division, cancelling common factors. So let's see if we can get a better understanding of what it means when I'm cancelling common factors. Just once again, quickly, what we saw in the previous video, we saw that um, any number divided by 1 is equal to itself. We also saw that any number divided by 0 is undefined. And this is very, very important. We may not uh, undefined. We may not divide by zero. It is the, it's not allowed, okay, because it's undefined. And then finally, any number divided by itself is equal to one. And we saw, or we said, that division means how many times can I subtract something um, to get zero, okay. So now we're going to look at a few examples. Let's say. I have a, or a generalization of another aspect. Let's say I have two x's and I want to ask how many times can I divide or how many times does x divide into two x's. Remember what we said, x means how many times can I subtract it until I get zero. So let's go and count. I've got two x. I subtract one x and then my answer is equal to x. Not 0 yet. If I subtract another x, my answer would be 0. So how many times did I subtract it? Twice. Okay. This looks slightly interesting. Okay. Looks like this 2 and that 2 has got something in common. Let's, let's look at 3. If I've got 3 x's, and I ask how many times can I subtract x from 3x's or how many times does x divide into 3x I see I've got 3x minus x gives me 2x minus another x gives me 1x minus another x gives me 0 so I could do it three times okay and without wasting too much of your time I'll just tell you it seems like this x and that x cancelled each other out and I'm just left with 2 and in the bottom it's not 0 but 1. 2 in the numerator and 1 in the denominator. Uh, why is it not 0? Well remember we can't divide by 0, we can't have and in the denominator my factors are actually 1x. Here it's actually 1, 2 and x and here it seems like the same thing happens. So if, if I were to look at 4x's without taking the long way around, I said 4x divided by x. It seems like the answer would be 4 over 1 equal to 4. 4 divided by 1 is equal to 4. Any number divided by 1 is equal to 4. Uh, sorry, any number divided by 1 is equal to itself. That's what we had here. Okay, so this is what is called cancelling common factors. Cancelling common factors. Okay, and this is what it means. If we have if we have a common factor in every term, this is very important, in every term of the numerator, numerator, that is what we call the top part, is called the numerator, and every term in the denominator denominator okay almost out of space they may be cancelled and they're not really cancelled out but in fact they divide into each other to give me one okay so this actually becomes 3 times 1, which is just 3. 
Okay, now we can expand this to other factors as well. So cancelling common factors. And remember that it is important that it appears in every term of the numerator. It must be a factor in every term of the numerator and denominator. Okay, so let me write another example. If I have something like, let's go for 2x divided by xy. Okay, then there's an x and there's an x. Remember, if, they, if there was nothing left in the numerator denominator, it would still just be a 1. So this would be 2 over y. How about if I had more terms in the numerator? Let's say I had 2x plus xy divided by, uh, let's say, x plus xy something like that. Now, again, I'm allowed to cancel the common factor because every term, there's two terms in the numerator and there's two terms in the denominator. And since every term contains an x, I may cancel them. Okay. Now, remember when it cancels, it is not, com if the term cancels completely, it's not 0, but it's 1. Okay, there's still a 1 times there, it's not 0. It cancels here to leave me with y. My final answer is 2 plus y divided by 1 plus y. And now this is where the mistake comes in that most students want to make is they want to cancel those as well and say this answer is just 2. It's not. Why not? Because I can only cancel if they are common factor in every term. There's not a y in this term and in that term. Please take note of this. If somehow you can tattoo it on the person sitting in front of you, their head, so that you can always see it, that would be the best. But if not, just somehow try and commit it to memory. You cannot cancel if it's not common in every single term. Okay, so one more example. Let's, let's go a little bit further. How about we have something like 9x3 divided by 3x2. Remember that this is, the 9 can be prime factorized. So we can write it as 3 times 3. And then the x we, to the power of 3, we know there's 3x's. In the denominator, we've got 3 x x. Now in the numerator we only have one term, in the denominator only one term, and there's an x there and an x there, an x there and an x there, a 3 there and a 3 there. They cancel. Now to show they cancel we do this, so, uh, we strike it through, okay? Uh, you can do that lightly in a pencil on paper, and then we see what we have left is a 3x, nothing in the denominator. No, we do have something, we have a 1. So it's 3x divided by 1, which is just 3x. Okay, but based on this, we get to another, I'll do it here briefly, exponential law. Okay, it's law 2. Is it when I have a base and an exponent divided by, uh, let's change that exponent to n, divided by a base and another exponent. The exponent tells me how many there are in the numerator. So yeah, I've got b, b, a uh, bunch of b's multiplying each other. There's n of them. And in the bottom, I've got b times b. There's m of them. Okay, n and m. But now some will cancel the others. Now depending on what is the difference between m and m, uh, that would tell me how many is left. Okay, so in the end, I will have b n minus m left and nothing in the denominator. Okay, now that is if there's more in the numerator than in the denominator, but if it was the other way around, it can also be equal to 1 over b to the power m minus n. If I've got more in the denominator, I will be left with some b's in the denominator. Again, more on this in a later video. But for now, all you need to know is that I can subtract exponents like I did here. That x to the power of 3, x to the power of 2 became x to the power of